Hey, listen, you ever hear of the Coastal Zone Management Act? No, I haven't. Not, not really. I mean, sort of. No. No, I haven't. America's coasts, home to more than half of our nation's population, yet filled with natural ecosystems that support a diversity of life. Home to industries that produce more than half our nation's gross domestic product, yet also provide us with endless recreational opportunities. An unusual balance, and one that has only been maintained because of the Federal Coastal Zone Management Act. The Federal Coastal Zone Management Act is probably the most important statute you've never heard of. Without it, our coastline would look significantly different. Forty years ago, America's coasts were headed for disaster. Haphazard development was gobbling up shoreline, while toxic waste was killing wildlife and washing up on our beaches. Something needed to be done. So in 1972, leaders in Washington collectively decided to coordinate the development, restoration, and preservation of the nation's coastal resources and passed the Coastal Zone Management Act, or CZMA. I think that was a critical time where really we needed to set up some basic rules about how do we manage this development on the coast and how do we do it in a way that I think is coordinated and how each state can also manage their own development in ways that are unique to their state. It was not so much a natural resource protection effort at the beginning. It was more, look what's going on on the Jersey coast, or look what California's starting to do about development on its coast. Probably most people don't realize the connection between much of what's happening today in the coastal zone and, and the foundation and the roots of that uh, Coastal Zone Management Act uh, that we've been working with. It really has brought attention to our coastal areas. It's brought attention to uh, the economic importance of our areas, the need to balance the use of areas versus the protection of areas, and the importance of estuaries and the habitat within those estuaries. I think it's important to protect these beaches? Yes. Why? Because we need this beach. It's, it's fun. It's, when it's hot out, you come here to get in the water, have fun and stuff like that, run around. As a national organization, I think we see very clearly an, an important role for uh, a federal agency like NOAA uh, and particularly OCRM, which really is where some of the core activities of, of coastal zone management um, are housed, um, because it provides a lot of consistency uh, on a national level. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration coordinates the overall administration of the CZMA. Through their Office of Ocean and Coastal Resource Management, it partners with coastal states and territories to develop tools, models, and policies for the benefit of each state and America's nearly 100,000 miles of ocean and Great Lakes coastline. The Coastal Zone Management Act provides us with a guidance and funding to both address national priorities within the context of state, statewide initiatives and add value to what we're doing um, within, within our coastal zone. They are very supportive, understand the issues in Delaware. Their federal consistency assistance, which is the regulatory arm uh, of our program, they have some real uh, national experts in that. 34 states now have coastal management programs, but the CZMA legislation also recognized the need for resource protection and created the National Estuarine Research Reserve System. Now a network of 28 estuary areas throughout the U.S. and territories, the reserves are protected habitats used for research, education, and stewardship. We do a lot of long-term monitoring and research, and we work on the coastal wetlands. Uh, we study them. We try to understand how they function. This research provides important information that serves a variety of purposes for decision makers. We use it for education, we use it for training coastal decision makers, and we also use those places for people to come and enjoy the sites and help us actually. So the financial assistance is great, we couldn't do it without them. The regulatory part of the program and their science and technical capabilities, they bring a network to the coastal states that is very helpful. We, we had a lot of 
disease problems way back in the 50s and then in the 80s and in the early 90s again. And, um, and, and we've really been able to overcome, you know, all these, all these problems uh, by, you know, by managing the fishery. And, and it's taken everybody to, uh, you know, to work together to do this. There are lots of partnerships that NOAA and OCRM have developed over the years. Uh, of course, their first uh, attention is really being paid to their state partners. Our governors want renewable energy. We want to make sure that it's cited appropriately and that other uses are protected, fisheries, aquaculture, navigation, so we can bring the Coast Guard to the table, we can bring the Navy to the table. It is an integrated program, so we're a team and we don't work actually independently. The research and the education, the stewardship, all of us work together in, and that's what makes the system so special. 18! Oh, as a kid fishing in, in the Delaware, I caught perch that were brown. I didn't know white, uh, white perch were white until I moved down here in 89. But it's very, very important to manage the coast. If we don't, or people like us don't speak up for it, what's, going to, what's it going to be? The Port of Los Angeles and Long Beach have actually worked with the state, worked with the Coastal Management Act to have one permit. So once they get their master plan developed, uh, as long as it's consistent with that master plan, they can get one permit under the Coastal Management Act. NOAA has a presence in the Great Lakes, and they've done a great job, I would say, in the last five years of really getting out and meeting people, sharing what they've learned. We have a you know, sustainable fishery here. It's been deemed sustainable. That's pretty uh, impressive in, uh, in today's fisheries with the cooperation of uh, you know, state and, and federal people, and, uh, and, and we, uh, we're real proud of what we have here. In New Jersey, you have certainly a, a lot of um, success stories, I think, in beach access issues, really working uh, with the state and the local communities to assure beach access. They work through us to get local governments uh, the capacity to make good decisions. From little tiny Milton, Delaware, which is where I live, to the city of Wilmington. For us, it's really brought attention to the importance of estuaries and the habitat within those estuaries. Uh, and it's allowed us to be able to protect and to restore those, those critical habitats. Yeah, it's a good thing that they think about it now because in a few years here to come, there's going to be some big changes. Uh, if you've been here for a little while, you can tell that the tide's riding, it's rising, and she's rising fast. One thing about the Coastal Zone Management Act that most people don't recognize is how flexible it is. And one of its strengths is that it's flexible to address new and emerging changes. In New Jersey, we have wind farms. We have a lot of interest in some areas in offshore aquaculture facilities. We have a lot of interest, obviously, in ports and navigation are important to a lot of areas. So I do see sort of coastal zone management and states being very interested in working with the federal government on offshore development. The other thing that government needs to do is set the uh, agenda for planning into the future for what we know are going to be major events. One of these is sea level rise. Unfortunately, with the sea level rise rate that we're projecting, uh, if we do nothing, there will be a tendency to lose probably half to three quarters of our tidal wetlands this century. Those wetlands are crucial for water quality maintenance, for sustaining fish and shellfish populations, and for coastal flood protection. You can debate the science of climate change, but you can't debate the historical impacts of climate change. Sea level rise, ocean acidification, flooding issues. We see that a lot in all the coastal communities. I feel that we still have a lot of work to do with letting people know that this statute is about balance. It's about protecting irreplaceable resources. It's about development. We haven't cracked that nut yet with uh, how important and how effective it is. It's a great statute. In the tidal zones and, and, and along Louisiana and the coast of North Carolina, you have those buffer islands that, 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 that spare hurricanes and storms. Uh, we don't understand the value of that until we see it. When they're gone, they're gone forever. The work that OCRM does and, and the Coastal Management Act uh, in general is not just about protecting ecologically important areas. It's really uh, very much about keeping the economic growth moving ahead. We have a huge amount of people and GDP that's in those coastal communities. So I think really investing in that and both preserving what we have, but making sure that we can anticipate how to protect things in the future, I think is just invaluable. I tell you what, if I couldn't fish this bay, I don't know what I would do. And if this goes down, I go down with it. 
So to a lot of people's livelihood and their hobby. We're the people in the trenches who know the pressures that are on our coastal zone, and we know the businesses that need to survive and prosper, and the importance of ecotourism and our beaches to our economy. Without good planning, without the resources that the federal government has come to bring to our state, we, we could not do this. Uh, it needs additional support. America's coasts continue to be our most important economic and environmental resource. And the CZMA is one of the best tools to safeguard coastal communities, economies, and habitats. As the nation deals with the ever-growing challenges facing our coastal regions, we must plan for these impacts today and build public-private partnerships to help prepare for and manage them effectively. As they did 40 years ago, Congress needs the strength and vision to make America's coasts and the agencies and programs that protect it a priority for our sake and for future generations.